So thank you everyone for joining us for another nourishing conversation. Today I'm here with Jackie Victor. Jackie is a registered acupuncturist and uses a variety of modalities in her practice. She is certified as an instructor for healing touch. She also uses cranio craniosacral therapy and neuro-linguistic programming in her practice. So she has a very eclectic way of helping people address their health and wellness goals. So thank you so much, Jackie, for being here today. And we're going to talk about a really interesting topic. And we were just chatting a few minutes ago about how it's so relevant for both of us. Um, and it's this idea of self-sabotage. And so I'd like to start with kind of defining what exactly we mean when we say self-sabotage self and why the heck do we do it? <laughs> so um, for me, and thank you for inviting me, I really appreciate um, having the chance and the opportunity to speak with you. This is awesome. We don't get to see each other in person, but at least we get to see each other <laughs> and have some social interaction. <laughs> so, um, I think self-sabotage is, for me, it's been like kind of insidious. Like it's, it's one of those things where you don't realize you're doing it until you realize like, you know, during this quarantine, I said, oh, I'm going to have like probably six to eight weeks that I'm not going to be at the clinic. So I am going to clean out the garage. I'm going to finish unpacking those boxes I never unpacked because we we moved into this house about a year and a half ago. And I'm just going to like, you know, do everything I haven't had. I'm even going to paint. <laughs> yeah, pretty much haven't done any of that. <laughs> and I think it's not necessarily self-sabotaging, but really like just time just doesn't, I don't know. For me, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I have the best of intentions. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I noticed that my attention got pulled here and then I got pulled there and everyone else's issues or problems or um, everything became so much more important for everyone else. And all of a sudden, everything that I had planned to do is at the bottom of the list. So if we can call that maybe self-sabotage, <laughs> um, it's putting ourselves at the end of the list. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my, my definitions. I probably have many. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think that it's, um, it, it's really interesting to think about being a doer or being a caregiver and you know that that actually putting people's needs ahead of yours or goals ahead of yours is self-sabotage it, it you know it, it is a behavior that you know can be helpful when it's done willingly and with joy but then if we are, we're kind of becoming resentful about it that it actually is a way that you know so uh, subconsciously we are interfering with achieving our own goals, right? It's really interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the terms that we use in Chinese medicine is um, over-nurturing. And so I find that a lot of mothers and a lot of women, I mean men as well, but a lot of women have the tendency to over-nurture. Mm -hmm. So they're doing everything for everyone else, their children, their family, making sure everything is, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of mothers right now are at home making sure that their kids' education is still at the top of the list and making sure that, you know, kids are being fed and everyone is happy and healthy and no one is, you know, going too stir crazy during this time of, you know, being at home. And we end up at the bottom of the list. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes you can't pour from an empty cup. So if we self-sabotage in the way of, you know, just leaving ourselves at the bottom of the list all the time, we end up not being able to give as much as we could have and still keep ourselves healthy and wealthy and safe and happy and joyful and, and full of vitality rather than being just over nurturing and stressed out. And so if, for me, it's been, um, I think just trying to, to make sure that I find moments of self-care 
And I think when I find those moments of self-care, those, they don't have to, I think sometimes we put in our minds that that self-care has to be like a long bubble bath and it has to be, you know, an hour long or I have to do exercise. So I'm going to, you know, really get at it. And, you know, it has to be minimum an hour long and not everyone has an hour in their day, even being at home. So I think it's finding those moments, those little five minutes, 10 minutes, taking a few minutes to just center and bring yourself to the present moment and bringing yourself to, you know, recognize why are you doing that behavior or what are you doing? Or, you know, do I really need that extra cupcake or do I need, you know, what, what do I need? Maybe I just need to breathe. Right. Right. I love that, that it can be simple and just like you said, just a, a moment in time, not hours and hours every day that have to go into the self-care piece. Yeah. And one of the dangers I think too, is that we can label, whether it's labeling a behavior or an emotion, we can label it as good or bad. And then that just generates guilt. And I think guilt is one of the most toxic emotions, you know, that we can stew in. So really it's about just being okay, just recognizing, being aware of how you're feeling, why it might be triggering a certain behavior and, you know, accepting like, yeah, I did have that extra cupcake. That's okay. But let me kind of figure out, was it really the cupcake that I wanted, <laughs> you know, or was it, was it an emotional connection or was it, you know, five minutes to myself? <laughs> so just really identifying yeah. what is it that I'm missing? It's not really the cupcake. Exactly. Um, one of the things I've been doing over this time is a lot of webinars. <laughs> Everyone has been so generous with their time. And one of the things um, that I was listening to yesterday was about um, how everything around us is neutral. And it's how we react to it. We give it a value. So if someone says something to you or if someone does something around you or you can either choose to make that action and react to it in a negative way or in a positive way, but it has nothing to do with what the person said or what the person did. It's all how we react. Well, I think if we can learn to recognize our, our reactions are just that, reactions. And so learning to breathe. So one of my techniques really is just breathing right? Um, I taught Qigong for about eight years, and I've been practicing Qigong for about, well, since 2008. So I don't know how many of that years, years that makes my 12, I think. Um, and one of the things is, is learning to be in the present moment and breathing. So um, there's a technique called box breathing. You've probably done it a lot. Um, and just, you know, it can be like, Breathe in for four, hold it for four, and breathe out for eight. Very simple. Um, some of the techniques are showing, you know, breathe in for six, breathe out or hold for six, and then breathe out for six. But whatever it is, whichever you use, it's breathing. And it's bringing you in that present moment and connecting with your body. It's wonderful. I love that. Um, so how can we remember to do that? Because I think that's part of it is people know I should be breathing or I should take a moment. What are, what are some triggers that we can establish that would ensure that by the end of the day, we've done that a couple of times? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's just recognizing how your external environment is affecting you. So if you're starting to feel like, the kids are a little too loud or your husband is getting a little too irritating or then it's, it's time to look within and say, Oh, what's going on? Why am I reacting to that external stimulus? So why am I feeling this way? And it's not that it's, we're, uh, we're allowed to feel however we feel, but then we have to kind of own it mm -hmm. and we have to kind of look within and say, Oh, okay. That's not about them. That's about me. Oh, what have I not done in the last couple hours? Did I even, you know, 
drink water? Did I even get up and walk around? Did I even, you know, give myself a five minute break of, you know? So sometimes it's just realizing that you've kind of gotten stuck in that moment and, and kind of connect with that, connect with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it brings us back to this idea of not judging that, but also not suppressing it, right? Just right. accepting like, okay, this is bubbling up for me right now. Right. I wonder why. Right. <laughs> I'm curious yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I think it's, it's, like you said, it's, it's not judging it and not judging ourselves for it. Mm-hmm. I think it's okay to feel what we feel. If we didn't, we wouldn't be human. So I think it's perfectly fine to feel those feelings, but then we have to recognize them and own them. Yeah. And then just deal with them. Yeah. I love that. So as we've talked about, one of my, um, strong interests is around power habits and identifying these things that we can do on you know a consistent basis maybe not daily um, but as often as we need to that can really have a big impact in the long run for promoting health and wellness and so you've talked about breath do you have another power habit that you can share in terms of ways that we can recognize emotions when they bubble up and you know become more aware of staying neutral and practicing some self-care strategies that help to fill our cup Mm -hmm. i have many (laughs) (laughs) Uh, a lot of them are based either in energy medicine which is one of my true passions um and just how energetically we can deal with our our emotions but one of the easy things that I find is um, based in Qigong. And so acupuncture, energy medicine, it's all energy. I mean, it's all, we're made of energy and it's moving the chi, right? Moving the energy flow and getting unstuck. So one of the things I love to do, and it's so easy. And if you think, you know, okay, I'm going to look like an idiot doing this somewhere. (laughs) Just go to the washroom and do it. (laughs) And um, it's just shaking. So just literally shaking and letting your body just shake it out because you're moving the energy and you're moving the flow and you're allowing things to unstuck, right? But because we're physically unstucking it, we're also unstucking it emotionally in our, in our brains. And so it's a physical way of doing it. Um, and if you notice in the animal world, if they get a huge scare or if they something traumatic happens to them, they will literally lay down and shake and they shake it off. That's where the term comes from. They just shake it off. That is cool. And so sometimes we just to shake it off. <laughs> right. Yeah, I love that. I, I think it's it's really lovely to have some kind of physical action, right? I mean, the the breath this is a physical action as well, but to really put that emotion kind of in the body and shake it off is super powerful. That's a lovely power habit. I'm going to hold on to that one. That's great. (laughs) Well, I think the reason that it's, it's fun too. (laughs) And so kids can do it. I think it's something we can teach younger kids too, to just shake it off. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, blah, 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 blah. But sometimes that's fun to do too. (laughs) Yeah, maybe match it to the emotion, right? (laughs) A strong shake or a more irritating emotion. Right, exactly. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. (laughs) Is there anything else you would like to share? One of the other power habits that I have that I find sometimes we just need to go into our parasympathetic system. And so the sympathetic, right, is the fight or flight. And we can be like, ah, and then we recognize that we're in that fight or flight and, or freeze, right, deer in the headlights. Um, And we need to get it back into our parasympathetic system, which is the rest and digest and the calm system. But we don't know how to do that sometimes for ourselves. And so, of course, people come see us, right? Um, And we help them with that. So either with acupuncture or I do it with healing touch and, you know, different techniques. Um, But one of them is 
crossing your body. So it's a body brain connection. And so literally activating the parasympathetic system. And so you put your hands and cross them this way, flip them, and then you cross your ankles. Okay. And when you put yourself in position, you're literally activating your parasympathetic system. And so you have no choice but to calm down. <laughs> That's lovely. It reminds me of the alternate nostril breathing, that same kind of like yes. between the left and right, right? Breathing in one side, out the other, in and out, yes. just really helping to sync up both sides. So yeah, exactly. so you can do this while you're alternate nostril breathing. <laughs> Oh, that would be fun to try. <laughs> That's a superpower habit. <laughs> we can like invent some, right? Create, right. <laughs> put them all together. <laughs> a mashup. <laughs> That's great. I love that. I love. I love that you're incorporating. You know, we're talking energy, um, but then you're really incorporating like a physical movement with with that, which I think is so important and relatable, right? People can do that. Um, whereas sometimes just being in the head, like we, we want to get out of our heads, right? That we spend way too much time there. So having some kind of physical activity is, is really, really helpful for, for helping to promote that parasympathetic response that we want to achieve. Lovely. Thank you so much, Jackie. I could spend all day talking <laughs> with you. Um, so like maybe we'll do that someday. <laughs> someday <laughs> even in person. Love would that. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> so thank you so much for the invitation. I feel really honored to have been uh, able to have this conversation with you and I would love to have many more with you because yes, we could do this all day. <laughs>